Hello, my dear friends. Hope you guys are doing okay today. Thursday, the 25th of November, 2020. We're going to be talking about these two points right here. Came across a couple of videos recently where two different guys have two different opinions on what is making the airplane dip its nose as it flies across. So let's look at these two closely. Uh, one says the atmosphere is the one that's causing it. The other one says gravity is the one that is causing it, uh, that the one that makes the airplane to dip down its nose as it flies uh, over Earth. Now I just want to remind you guys two things really important. An airplane was designed, was engineered to overcome those two forces weight also some people call it gravity but both is the same thing and the drag so for those two natural forces they develop they engineer two artificial forces the engines that causes thrust and the wings that lift the plane so you have two artificial forces counterbalancing the two natural forces and that's how the airplane flies so the airplane was designed to overcome these two forces. The airplane was designed, engineered to overcome gravity. Reason why gravity does not have any force upon the airplane and neither does the atmosphere because the airplane is designed to fly, cut through the atmosphere and fly straight and level. So we're gonna look at these two claims I'm going to play parts of their videos and show their channels and you're going to see that what the, the airplane does not have to adjust for curvature because there is no curvature. An airplane flies over flat, now rotating earth. So this is the first uh, video I'm going to play from this guy. Uh, his, I'm going to link his video and uh, he claims that gravity, which is a force at the center of Earth is causing the airplane to tilt down its nose. So let's go ahead and listen to him and examine his claims. And today we're looking at the age-old question of if pilots have to dip their nose as they fly around the globe. So what happens if the pilot does not dip their nose? So as we fly along, if we don't dip the nose, it'll look something like this. And that makes no sense whatsoever. All right, so as we fly along, clearly we have to keep dipping the nose to keep reestablishing level to the globe. Here's the tricky part. It's not the pilot or the autopilot which is dipping the nose. It's actually the airplane maintaining level as it flies around the globe. All right, let's take a closer look at how the airplane is trimmed for level flight. So right there, he calls the weight of the plane gravity, claiming that a force and uh, the core of earth is doing the job of bringing down an airplane flying over the globe but later on in this video i'm going to show you how this is not the case and how level changes as we fly around the globe so as we're in level flight we have balanced forces or lift balances or gravity and thrust balances drag but what happens as we fly around the globe as we move forward gravity is going to shift backwards because the center of the globe is moving behind us at this point, since the aircraft is trimmed for level flight, the aircraft will automatically re-establish level to the new gravity and it will pitch the nose down. That's without any pilot or autopilot intervention. That's just the natural mechanics of flight and the aircraft flying level to local gravity due to how it's trimmed. We fly along some more, gravity shifts behind us and the aircraft re-establishes level. We fly along some more, gravity shifts behind us and the aircraft re-establishes level. So he's claiming there is this force at the center of the earth that corrects the airplane automatically, magically, but this is unproven. Besides that, the point of uh, the airplane is engineered to overcome gravity. So gravity has no hold on the airplane at all. As long as it's flying, it's overcoming gravity. There's no power, there's no gravity doing this job. The, fly the airplane is designed to fly straight on level. At airliner speeds, about 450 knots, 450 nautical miles per hour, uh, we cover about seven and a half degrees of curvature per hour. So over one hour of flying, the nose of aircraft will have, quote, dipped seven and a half degrees down. Next hour, another seven and a half degrees down. 
Of course, the dipping happens on a moment by moment basis, second by second as we fly around the globe, always in level flight, but in level flight around the curvature. Why can you not feel this in the aircraft? Well, it's a very gradual change. So seven and a half degrees per hour equates to 0 0.125 degrees per minute. So basically a 10th of a degree per minute change down in, uh, in pitch. That's why we cannot feel it. Um, the passengers don't feel it. The pilots don't feel it. It just happens behind the scenes. So he's basically claiming that every few seconds gravity brings us down as if the plane was flying exactly like it's being shown here on the video. You know, go straight and then falls back and then go straight and falls back. This is why he claims that the airplane is doing this automatically, magically by a force coming from the core of the earth. Let's go on now and talk about what this guy says. He says the atmosphere is actually the one that's pushing down or bringing down the nose of the plane in order to have it adjusted for curvature. I got this video from this channel, Great Outdoors. So let's go ahead and listen to him. Okay, in this video, I'm going to attempt to quickly explain why when a plane flies over a globe Earth, why the pilot doesn't have to constantly make adjustments for the curvature of the earth and why the plane just naturally follows and if the power is set to a certain amount that it will maintain a certain altitude barring like updrafts and, and other turbulence in the atmosphere but just in general the pilot doesn't have to consciously adjust for that because well the physics takes care of that so what you have right here is a, the plane is now a certain distance above the earth. Now the higher you go from the surface of the earth, the lower the air pressure is. Now if you want to know why that what is, you can look that up online. Here's a Wikipedia article about it and it actually has a part here about how it varies with altitude. And there are countless other websites that also go over. What he's saying, it's better explained on the flat earth. You have the atmosphere where the airplane can fly from 31,000 feet up to 38,000 feet. That's uh, the safe zone for commercial aircrafts to fly. And it, it's better explained on the flat earth map because you don't see this dipping down the nose of the plane magically being performed every few miles. And, uh, on the flat earth model it explains much better because the, because the plane once it reaches its uh, altitude the pilot levels the plane and the automatic pilot takes over and the airplane can fly up to 13,000 kilometers or 8,000 miles without having to dip down its nose because the plane is flying over a level earth. The same thing so I'm not going to go into detail here but just the higher you go the thinner the atmosphere is the lower the pressure the lower the density and planes basically work by having air go over the wings and that creates lift and the less air pressure the less density of the air the less that the wings less lift that the wings produce so as a plane is flying over the globe over the earth and it's going along if it were to go and go in a straight line like this For globe believers, a straight line means a curved line. I don't know what part of a straight line don't they understand. Because on the left side you see a straight line. For, but for globe believers, when an airplane is flying a straight line, it's, it's curving down. So I don't understand what part of, this, of a straight line they don't get it. There's no need for adjustments because the surface of the earth is flat. An airplane is designed to fly over a flat surface. That's why it's called an airplane. It flies straight and level over a flat surface. But those guys don't get it. They think that flying straight is curving down. As I hope you can see, it's out to over any point of the earth would be getting higher and higher. Now if the engine speed and power is constant, they're not changing that, then as the plane would go straight, the altitude above the earth would be uh, increasing, and so the density of the air would be decreasing, so the amount of lift the wings can produce with a constant engine speed would be reduced so the plane actually drops in altitude. I can show it here, is that at this point, 
this is just relative, but its relative distance above the directly below it would be 2.23 here. It just has millimeters, but 2.23. Then if you take this and move the plane over here at this point, it now would be 3.2. So it would be nearly 50% higher in altitude if we were to try to continue in a straight line. And as you again, as you go up in altitude, the air pressure and air density lessens. So the amount of lift the wings can produce on the plane lessens. So as the plane is going along, Let's continue and listen a little bit more of the hymn. As it goes, the amount of lift the wings produce is lessened, so then it automatically, without having the pilot having to change the elevator or the yoke on the airplane, it just follows the curvature and keeps a consistent altitude above the surface of the planet. So this way, at any one point here, its altitude will be the same, so the pilot doesn't have to make adjustments just the physics of how air pressure and air pressure with altitude work will keep the plane at a relatively constant distance above the surface of the Earth. Okay, so he's basically saying exactly what the other guy was saying, that the plane keeps on falling down into the uh, into the roundness of the so-called ball Earth and keeps falling as if the plane was flying exactly like this animation is showing. You know, so for globe believers, a straight line is not a straight line, it's a curved line. Uh, but th they are wrong because the airplane was designed to fly over, to overcome gravity and fly over flat surface. So let's break it down about what the airplane was designed for. Let's go ahead and listen to this. If you have ever flown on an airplane, you know that it's an enormous sized, amazing machine. A typical 747 can carry more than 500 passengers and weighs around 800,000 pounds when taking off. Yet it rolls down the runway at a speed of 290 kilometers per hour and, as though by magic, lifts itself into the air and can travel up to 13,000 kilometers without stopping. Incredible, isn't it? and can travel up to 13,000 kilometers without stopping. Incredible, isn't it? The aerodynamics of an airplane. The four aerodynamics of an airplane are drag, thrust, weight, and lift. Thrust counters drag. It is a mechanical force that keeps the airplane moving in the air. Weight is the airplane body, passenger, and luggage weight in total. Lift overcomes the weight and holds the airplane in the air. Lift is created mostly by wings to keep the plane aloft. So, to keep the airplane moving, flying straight and level, this must be true. Which means no net force acting upon an airplane. In any case, if drag is greater than thrust, the plane slows down. If thrust is greater than drag, the plane moves faster. If weight is greater than lift, the plane descends. If lift is greater than weight, the plane climbs. So we just saw there the mechanics of the airplane, how it was designed to overcome the so-called gravity or the weight of the plane. The plane flies straight and level over a flat surface. There is no need for adjustment for any curvature because there is no curvature to be adjusted for. An airplane flies straight and level over a flat, non-rotating earth. That's not difficult to understand and, as he says, the airplane can fly over 13,000 kilometers or 8,000 miles without stopping. Incredible, isn't it? And can travel up to 13,000 kilometers without stopping. Incredible, isn't it? Now let's now look at a few examples uh, on the globe and on the flat earth map. Uh, let's compare a flight going from Santiago in South America to Toronto, Canada in North America. Let's go to the flat earth map. Let's consider this flight here. I have here the flat earth map. And let's consider this flight here between Santiago, Chile and Toronto. On this side here, I'm going to show on the globe how this flight would look like on the globe Earth. So let's look at here, Santiago in Chile, Toronto, Canada. 
on the flat earth map you see here how this flight would go so let's look from the side view here's the a view from the side on the flat earth so i added an airplane here to make things better for us to see so the airplane departs santiago from chile and flies one straight flight towards toronto crossing the equator and lands in toronto one more time takes off from santiago flies straight crosses the equator no problem at all keeps keeps flying lands toronto same thing happens on its way back takes off from toronto flies straight level towards santiago lands in santiago this is how this flight looks like on the flat earth map makes way more sense than if you compare to flying over above earth here's again a flat earth map this flight goes from south america to north america crossing the equator no problems at all no magics of gravity nothing just sit just flying this is how it looks like on the flat earth map this is what we observe uh, no, no no confusion here and here we have the same situation from santiago to toronto uh, this is a view from the top of course an airplane does not adjust for curvature because there's no curvature it flies straight over a flat non-rotating earth here you have two lines one according to the flat earth flying straight and level and the other one tilting down its nose according to the ball earth conflicting explanations whether this supposed dipping of the nose of the airplane is done mysteriously by gravity or by the atmosphere demonstrated the weakness of this argument so let's examine here so two examples uh, one on the flat earth and one on the globe earth so here you have the airplane taking off from santiago in chile towards toronto canada so the very first example we will see as if the plane was flying over a globe and dipping its nose so this is not what we observe this is not what the instruments in the airplane shows and uh, it is contrary to what we learn about the engineering of the airplane as it was designed to fly straight and level now this is what we observe on the flat earth map and on the flat earth and that's what it's really happening the airplane is flying level and and straight lift and thrust is balanced with weight and drag this way the airplane flies straight and level for thousands of miles now consider this very same flight toronto to santiago chile with an airplane flying upside down a ball with its nose pointing up or imagine the flight back from Santiago to Toronto the same situation the plane flying up a ball with its nose pointed up magically adjusting for curvature I imagine the same flight when the earth spinning and wobbling to account for the you know the explanation of the seasons so this is how the earth is spinning at the same time and consider also that when crossing the equator those airplanes would have to fly with their nose pointing up or down at a 90 degree angle also consider the fact that not only the earth is spinning but it's also going around the sun so all of this is happening while the globe earth is flying at a rate of 65,000 miles per hour around the sun while spinning on its axis at 1042 miles per hour so gravity is just weight gravity is not tipping the nose of the airplane down there's no such thing as an invisible force called gravity 
at the core of a fictitious spherical Earth. Airplanes fly straight when on cruise unless the captain decides to ascend or descend the aircraft. No external forces magically tilt the aircraft's nose down to adjust for curvature. Consider another flight, this one going from Perth to Beijing, also flying from north to south, while the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles per hour. So at the end of this flight, which takes about 12 hours, and it takes 12 hours for the Earth to rotate from one side to another, 180 degrees, by the time this plane reaches its destination, it will have flown sideways faster than it's going forward. So all those are difficulties that you find and you have to explain on about Earth. So we conclude that it's, the atmosphere is not pushing down the nose of the plane to adjust for curvature. It neither is a force called gravity in the center of the Earth, pulling down the nose of the plane in order to have it adjusted for the curvature. The only other option would be the pilot doing it, but we know pilots don't do that. There are no such forces called gravity or the atmosphere pushing down the nose of the plane. There are no airplanes flying, as you see here in this uh, animation, out around a ball, earth made uh, main, mainly of water, 70% of water. This is not just a cartoon image, but it's an impossibility. Airplanes are designed to fly level and straight over a flat surface. I know it, this is a very difficult pill to swallow for some of you who have been brainwashed since we were kids. All of us, and me included, uh, I was born believing this stuff. I'm happy to, to get to come to know Flat Earth, even though I, sp I spent most of my life believing the Globe Earth nonsense. I can now understand things much better, I can understand how the seasons work, why the stars are always the same for thousand thousand years, there's no parallax between stars, and uh, we can understand so many things with the flat earth. Flights are one of them. Flat earth is a hard to swallow pill, uh, but it's better to go ahead and face the truth now, as we see in the cartoon there, comforting lies and unpleasant truth. It's better to go ahead and swallow this hard pill and, you know, start seeing things differently. We can now understand why the world is going the way it is going, why they are gonna, they are building concentration camps for people like you and me, just because we don't agree with their policies. So it's a very bad world that we live in. This globe earth is demonic, evil, it's a prison. We don't have much time left, unfortunately. Some of us only have months left. We don't even have ears anymore. Guys, I wish you all the best. Take care. The earth is flat, stationary, and you know, just take advantage of the rest of the days that you have, that we all have, and you know, make the best choices. But don't keep on believing this global nonsense. The globe is a lie. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.